Okay guys, so another day, another batch of PlayStation 5 leaks and rumors, and I know it is beginning to become a little bit much, but we are just at a point where there's just so much information, about relevant information at that coming out about the PlayStation 5, and I know a lot of you are very, very interested in it, just like I am, and I'm assuming it'll slow down after today, maybe not though, it I keep thinking that's going to happen, and then I wake up, and there's just more things coming out about the PlayStation 5. Not that I'm complaining, right? But it is there is a lot. So this, though, I think is very interesting because the first thing we're going to go over is pretty much legitimate. I don't really want to call it... I mean, we have to call it a leak because it's not something we're supposed to know about, but essentially, the development kit has like an actual photograph of it. The real thing has made its way onto the internet. I'm going to do my best to you know, get the image of it and put it up on screen. Maybe I'll try to have it in the thumbnail. Um, I don't want to do anything that would potentially get me in trouble with Sony or anything like that because, again, we, we have to understand this is not supposed to be out here right now, and I'm sure Sony is not happy that it is. Um, and so, basically, that dev kit we saw and we talked about earlier um, this year, the one that's V-shaped, that is the real thing. It has been confirmed a few times by now by other people, but now we actually have photographic evidence that this is the real PlayStation 5 dev kit. And the first thing I want to say about it to you guys is understand, like, if you're somebody who's looking at this and you're like, wow, that is terrible, that is ugly, that is huge, that's too bulky, it is a dev kit. Whatever the PlayStation 5 does end up looking like, like, even if this overall design philosophy here with the V shape and whatnot, it's going to look way, way different than what you're looking at here right now because dev kits are not meant to be aesthetically pleasing. In fact, if you look at past dev kits for PlayStation consoles or any other console for that matter, they look horrendous. They all look terrible. They look literally like the opposite of something that a consumer would buy and put underneath their entertainment center. So before you get, you know, some, I know, because I know some people are going to get upset looking at this saying this looks horrible, understand that even though it kind of looks like a big projector, it's not going to look like this when it's all said and done. In fact, it may look literally nothing like this V-shape included. Now, me personally, well, before I give you my opinion on this, I should probably tell you where this came up from. Uh, apparently, the the picture w popped up on YouTube channel Zone of Tech and it's actually an identical match to the blueprints that appeared online earlier this year. And uh, yeah, it's it's essentially confirmed that this really is the actual dev kit. Um, and, you know, my opinion on it, I could see Sony retaining the overall design philosophy here with the V-shaped, you know, for PlayStation 5. Um, it's a little bit cheesy, but at the same time, I feel like it, it's kind of cool. Like, if it, it, it seems as though that that V-shape is going to function as you know, giving the, the console a ton of ventilation, you know, and for me, the most important thing with the PlayStation 5 is going to be how it functions, if it does what it's supposed to do, and it does it well, I do not care what it looks like, although, you know, I'm expecting something that looks pretty good, right, something somewhat, you know, next gen-ish, if you <laughs> will, and so for me, I don't really care what it looks like. Um, I have no problem with this dev kit. I am looking at this and I am trying to imagine how much better it could look when it's like in its final form and it's not a dev kit. But again, we do have to understand that it's going to look vastly, vastly different. So, you know, unfortunately, this is all we have to go by. And when we think of the PlayStation 5, this is going to be the image that pops up in our head. But sometime in 2020, early 2020, maybe February 2020, when Sony decides to uh, reveal this thing officially and show it to us, do not expect it to look like this. It certainly will not be this bulky, and it's going to look way, way better. I just, you know, that's the number one thing we need to emphasize here because some people are going to look at this and be like, oh my god, this is the most hideous console I've ever seen. It's a dev kit. Relax. All dev kits are hideous. We're not even meant to see them. So keep that in mind, but very interesting stuff there. It's going to be really interesting to see what the final design of the PlayStation 5 does end up looking like. It's also going to be interesting to see what Project Scarlet looks like and if these consoles end up looking similar. Uh, one thing I know is that I don't think Project Scarlet is going to look anything like the Xbox One S or One X. I think Phil Spencer said before that 
they are going for a different design philosophy this time. So it'll be interesting. It seems like we're going to have some interesting looking consoles come uh, with this next generation. But moving on from that, we're going to be talking about the PlayStation 5 price possibly leaking out here. And so, you know, it says that the PlayStation 5's price has reportedly leaked a day after its release date was also reportedly revealed, which anybody who missed that in yesterday's video, we talked about how there was apparently a leak or rumor that uh, comes from a retailer who claims they have an inside source that confirmed to them that the PlayStation 5 is going to be releasing in December, I believe specifically December 4th of 2020, and I don't believe that. I think that just doesn't make any sense. I don't understand why Sony would release their PlayStation 5 next-gen console in December. It really doesn't add up. But this says this time the leaks come courtesy of a European retailer, or more specifically, a retailer out of Slovakia, according to the retailer Pro Gaming Shop, the PlayStation 5 will cost 500 euros, which translates to roughly 558 US dollars. So if this is correct, this would mean the PlayStation 5 would cost 500 to 550 dollars in the United States, which would be 100 to 150 more than the PS4 cost at launch. As you may remember, the PS4 came in at 400 dollars when it launched in 2013, 100 dollars lower than the Xbox One. It says interestingly, the product page says the console will release on December 4th, 2020, which lines up with the aforementioned release date leak. And as you remember, December 4th is when the PS1 launched back in 1994. Okay, see, I didn't know that. I had no idea. I was under the impression, because I didn't look it up, maybe I should have, but I could have swore every PlayStation console launched in November. But it says here that apparently the PS1 launched uh, in December 1994. So... Yeah, okay, maybe maybe they will. Maybe they will. Maybe this is a real thing here. So it says, beyond this, the listing has uh, the confirmed information about the console, but not much more so. You know, we do have to take all this with a grain of salt. Uh, do I see, could I see the PlayStation 5 launching on December 4th, 2020 for 500 to $550? Yeah, I could. I, I think it's plausible. I think that if these leaks are fake, it's you know people making stuff up that sounds like it certainly could be within the realm of possibility but these are retailers but again you know we get this stuff all the time and I, I wouldn't say to bank on it right like I wouldn't sit here and anticipate that oh yeah Sony's next gen console for sure is now going to come out December 4th because you know it, it's it's probably not you know it's probably not we have to understand there's a reason why Sony has opted after the PlayStation 1 to release their new consoles every November after that and not December we also have to understand that the competition between the PlayStation 5 and you know Project Scarlet is going to be pretty fierce. So keeping that in mind, I don't think Sony is going to want to skip out or, or let Project Scarlet get out ahead of it. And even if it does, I don't think it's going to be by very much, you know. So I you know, this price point, five hundred to five hundred and fifty dollars, even if it is correct, I can't say it's surprising. I can't sit here and say, like, wow, we didn't see that coming. I think honestly all of us are expecting it to land right at that price point and I expect to pay a minimum of $500 for the PlayStation 5 when you listen to everything it's going to offer when you listen to all the tech that's being shoved into it and just how much of a leap it's going to be technologically speaking going from the PlayStation 4 to the PlayStation 5 it's going to be a $500 console minimum and I don't see a problem with that I think a lot of people are actually going to be totally okay and on board with paying $500 for the PlayStation 5, hearing the things it's going to be capable of, I believe it, man. Now, it, will it be a huge difference maker if it ends up being $550? Maybe. I, I don't think that that will be a breaking point for a lot of people. I think a lot of people will just kind of feel like, well, you know, I'm already paying $500. You know, if you're already somebody that's set on buying a PlayStation 5 in general, you already have that $500. You know, $50 is still a lot of money, but I, I just don't see that being... The difference maker, right? Like, so I could see it being five hundred and fifty dollars, but what will be interesting again for you know the competitive sake here, how much is Project Scarlet going to be? If Microsoft wanted to really get one over on Sony, they could potentially make their console cheaper. Do I see them doing that? No, because again, these consoles are going to pretty much be identical. But it could be something that does end up happening, whether or not it 
will happen. That remains to be seen, but I expect both consoles to launch anywhere between $500 and $550. Before ending this video, let's ask the question here. What if the PlayStation 5 ends up being $550, slightly more powerful than Project Scarlet, and Project Scarlet ends up being $500? Would that $50 be the difference maker for a bunch of gamers deciding, you know what, I'm going to save that $50 and go with Project Scarlet? No, I don't think so. I really don't. I think a lot of people are going to be like, you know what, I see the games that Sony's going to have on offer and the games that are going to be coming and, you know, they're going to they're gonna end up paying a little bit more for it. I think they'd be totally fine doing that. That's just my opinion on that, though. But that does it for the video, guys. Let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below. What do you think about this dev kit? Are you somebody who didn't believe it was real, and now you're a little bit shocked to find out that they, these are the real PS5 dev kits that are out there in the wild that developers have? Do you think that the PlayStation 5 is going to end up looking somewhat similar to this, or do you think it's going to look completely different? And what do you think about this retailer leak claiming that the PlayStation 5 is going to be between $500 and $550 and launch on December 4th. Were you aware that the PS1 launched apparently at that on that same date? Because I was not. Be sure to leave your thoughts down below. I'm going to be interested to see what you guys have to say. Leave the video a like if you did enjoy it or found it informative at all. It really helps. Let's me know you guys enjoy the content. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon so you never miss an upload. And feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys, take care.